In this video, I'll do a complete review of this Rikon 10-inch benchtop bandsaw, as well as show you how and why I upgraded the fence to be significantly better for resawing compared to the fence that came with the saw. I've had this saw for about a year. I use it in all different ways. I'll show you several examples along the way. And note that I'm not sponsored by Rikon. They don't know who I am. I bought this saw with my own money, and it's the only bandsaw I own. Let's start by taking a look at the fence system that came with the saw, and then I'll go through the upgrade to it that I made for resawing. One thing that I really like about this fence system is these fine adjustment screws. You can dial in the squareness of the fence relative to the tabletop and also adjust the angle of the fence to match the drift angle of the blade. There's also this measurement scale on the fence rail, and I tried to adjust and calibrate when I first set up the saw, but since you have to take off this fence rail to replace the blade and recalibrate it, it just wasn't worth it to me, so I don't really make use of the scale on the rail. The fence essentially has two different height options by just mounting the aluminum track one way or the other. You can also switch it to be either on the left of the blade or the right of the blade by just reversing where the fence attaches to the foot. So there are a lot of pretty cool things about this fence, but a couple of things that I thought could be improved to use it for resawing. First, even if the fence is set to its tallest setting, it still isn't really very tall and really just not tall enough if you want to resaw a larger piece of wood. And second, there's no anchor point on the outfeed end of the fence, which makes me nervous that I'm going to press too hard on the workpiece and kind of compromise the fence setting as I'm making the cut. One aspect of the great design of this fence system is that it's the perfect size to accept T-Track and really gives you a lot of options for pretty much any fence you want to attach to it. So to make the taller fence for a resign, I just use a piece of melamine and cut a groove for some T-Track on the router table. And then to get an anchor point on the outfeed end of the fence, I attached another piece of melamine at a 90 degree angle. Although I really didn't get it captured on camera, I was meticulous at this point to get these pieces exactly square 90 degrees to each other. So this gives me an anchor point on the outfeed end of the fence by just clamping it to the bandsaw tabletop. So when I first made this fence, I made it the full length of the table and used it a couple times like that as you can see here in this example. But then I realized it's really much better to end it shortly after the blade. So if you're resawing a piece of wood that has warping or some internal stress that's released after the cut, that it doesn't bind up the piece or pull it away from the saw. Like you can see here in this example, you wouldn't want the bow of the outfeed piece to be pushing the whole work piece away from the fence. So I just cut it shorter and much better now. And I also cut this notch in the fence just to give some flexibility to work with different height settings on the blade guards. And just one last thing to note about the fence system is that there's a place to hang it when you're not using it as well as a place to store the allen wrenches needed for the fence adjustments. Now that the fence is ready to resaw, let's change the blade to a half inch blade and then I'll show you several resaw cuts that I've made with really good results. The 5 16ths inch blade that comes with the saw is kind of a general purpose blade, but one of the reasons I decided to get this band saw is it'll take up to a half inch blade, which I think is important for good resaw results. And I use a 3 16 inch blade if I'm going to be cutting curves, like in this example of cutting a circle. So the blade that came with the saw really doesn't get used very much. I'll leave links in the description to these other blades that I use that fit this band saw. The ability to easily change the blade in a bandsaw is something that's important to me because if it's too difficult and I'll get lazy and won't do it, I'll end up using the wrong blade for the wrong cut and that's just not good. To replace a blade, I start by taking the fence rail off and then removing the table leveling screw. Then I loosen and move the blade guides away from the blade, both the upper and lower blade guides. I really like these cabinet door latches, kind of a cool elliptical design. Then just release the tension on the blade with the quick release lever. You should be able to just pull the blade off the top wheel, or it could be that you also need to back off the tensioning knob a little bit if the quick release lever didn't give enough. So then just thread the blade out and off the bottom wheel. Note that I probably should have been wearing some gloves for this because these teeth are pretty sharp. Then I put the new blade in and reset the blade tensioning quick release lever. 
While just turning the wheel by hand, I work on adjusting the blade tensioning and tracking kind of back and forth. The blade should ride right in the middle of the yellow tire for proper alignment. Once I have the blade pretty well aligned by just turning the wheel by hand, then I can fine tune it. I close the doors and turn the bandsaw power on. Looking through this little window, I can adjust the blade alignment to be just right. It's a little hard to see the yellow wheel pad in the video with this half inch blade. So here's a shot of it with a smaller, thinner blade so you can see how the tracking looks through the window. Next is to adjust the blade guides. I need to make a total of four adjustments. First, to move the whole carriage forward or backwards to set the front rollers just at the gullets of the blade. And then to set the rear blade guide with a small gap behind the blade. And then tighten each of the side blade guides about a 32nd of an inch from each side of the blade. The blade guide adjustments on this bandsaw are really pretty easy to set. They're spring loaded so you can do each one with just one hand using one finger to position the blade guide and the other fingers to tighten it when you get it in the right place. And then I just repeat all of those four settings on the lower blade guide below the table. Note that it's pretty tight space down here and the setting to move the carriage forward and backward uses this little lever to tighten it in place. So changing the blade on any bandsaw is really kind of tedious, but I think Rikon overall has done a pretty good job to make it as easy as possible. To get the fence set up for resaw, I just want to make sure that it's set to the same angle as the blade will kind of naturally want to cut, which is called the drift angle. To determine that angle, I mark a line parallel to one edge on a piece of scrap wood. Then I just freehand cut down that line, and when I feel like I have a nice straight cut going, then I turn off the bandsaw and mark a pencil line on the table. And this is the drift angle. Now I can adjust my fence to match this pencil mark line on the table. And if my resaw cut is a thin slice, then I'll use a drill bit just to set the fence for the proper width of the cut. The bandsaw has a resaw capacity of 5 inches, which is pretty good for a small benchtop bandsaw. Here's a cut that I made recently at the full width capacity. This wood is cherry, not the hardest wood, but still hard wood and it worked pretty well. I've also done similar cuts with walnut with no problem at all. There is a lower speed setting that should give the bandsaw more torque if you needed it, but I found I've not really needed it, at least for anything that I've used the saw for so far. To change the speed, you would just move this belt on the adjacent pulleys and it would give you a slower speed with more torque. I like to make use of a dual feather board when making resaw cuts. The miter slots in this bandsaw are 5 8 inch, which is not great in my opinion. They're not the standard 3 quarter inch that you'd find in most tools. So it was a little hard to find this feather board set up to fit. I'll leave a link in the description for this one that I found online. Works pretty good. Before we wrap things up, I just wanted to make a note on the dust collection system. This bandsaw accepts a 2.5 inch dust collection hose, which works with most shop vacs. And I think it's important to use the dust collection, since if you don't, the sawdust will build up inside like you see here when I got lazy and didn't hook up dust collection recently. Sure, I'd love to have a 14 inch or 17 inch bandsaw, but I just don't have the space in my small wood shop. And I've been pleasantly surprised with how much I can do with this 10 inch bandsaw. Thanks so much for watching.